Welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. I'm really excited about this week's insight because this is one of my favorite things about Exodus chapter 1. Today we're going to talk about the women in Exodus chapter 1. Maybe you haven't noticed this before. Pharaoh is never named in the book of Exodus. Pharaoh is not a name, it's a title. So any king of Egypt is called a Pharaoh. We're not told which Pharaoh this is, and that's one of the conundrums that Bible scholars have tried to solve and historians have tried to solve. But what is interesting is we do have names in Exodus chapter 1, and it's the names of the midwives. We're told in verse 15 that their names are Shifra and Pua, and I think it's significant. I think this is the narrator's uh, clue to us of who really has the power in this story. Pharaoh thinks he's controlling everything, but who actually undermines him successfully? It's Shifra and Pua, these Hebrew midwives. Now, we, we talked last week about how Pharaoh was afraid of a military overthrow. He was afraid that the Israelites would rebel against him, that they would join with some other rebellious nation and beat him in battle. So he has a solution to this. His first plan is to try to oppress the Israelites with really hard labor, and I think he's hoping they won't have any energy left to make offspring, but it doesn't work. They continue to multiply. And so plan B is to pull these two midwives aside and he tells them this, verse 16, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. Now, I think in Pharaoh's mind, he's thinking, I'm afraid of soldiers coming after me, of armed rebels overthrowing my power. So I'll kill the boys when they're babies, and then they won't grow up to be soldiers. But in fact, it's the women who he allows to live who undermine him at every turn in Exodus chapter 1. So, and the, the word for let her live in Hebrew is vachaya. So remember that, vachaya, he's going to let the girls vachaya. Well, the midwives don't obey him. They defy him. Um, in, in, as they do their duties, they do not kill the baby boys like they're supposed to. And so he summons them and, and says, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? And the midwives answer him, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous. And the word for vigorous in Hebrew is chayot. It's the same word. They're lively. And they give birth before the midwives arrive. So Pharaoh thinks, let's let the girls live, but it's their living, the living of the women who actually are his main problem because they give birth before the midwives come. At least that's what the midwives report. And the people continue to increase. So so then he goes with plan C, which is every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but every let every girl live. And again, he's telling them um, to let them, uh, to vahaya them, to let them be alive. And the story doesn't end here. In chapter two, it's Moses' mother and Moses' sister who defy Pharaoh's orders by saving Moses' life. Now they technically obey Pharaoh, by putting Moses in the Nile, but they do so in a way that will spare him, they hope. And, and then eventually Pharaoh's own daughter defies him by drawing this baby out of the water, seeing his cries, hearing him, and, and having compassion on him and letting him live. So Pharaoh is losing his grip on his nation. He is trying these various tools of oppression and they're not working because at every turn, a woman undermines his authority. Just a, a look ahead to chapter 5, we see that Moses is about to die in chapter 5 because he's failed to circumcise his sons and his wife saves his life there too. So in the narrative of Exodus, we have multiple occasions where women save the lives of Moses and the other men and do so by engaging in civil disobedience, a peaceful protest against the oppressive empire. None of them overstep the bounds of their their um, family role, their midwife, wife, sister, daughter, mother, they're, they're all fulfilling their normal um, roles in that society, and yet they're doing so in ways that defy Pharaoh subversively. 
It's a brilliant narrative and an exciting beginning to a really great book. I hope you'll stay with me for another Torah Tuesday next week. Um, in the meantime, I would love for you to share the word with friends of yours who you think might find this interesting. And I'd love to know if you've heard this before, if you've noticed this before about the women in Exodus. Drop me a comment below and tell me what you think. Have a great week.